The Spin-Off Podcast Network. This is Kiwi is back for a brand new season with more inspiring kōrero from special guests including rugby player, father and role model TJ Peronara. My family bring me joy. Rugby brings me joy too, but it's not the same joy as my family brings me. And global dancer and choreographer Kirsten Dodgen. For some reason people think I'm very intimidating. Listen to the new season of This Is Kiwi, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in collaboration with Kiwi Bank. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Do you find it hard staying optimistic with all the financial news in the media? I'm Bernard Hickey, and on my podcast, When the Facts Change, I'm here to help you navigate the ever-changing landscape of economics in Aotearoa. So join the conversation every Friday on When the Facts Change, Brought to you by the Spin Off Podcast Network in partnership with Kiwi. Is it is it still true that that the weather and porn are the most searched things? Just so you know what the weather's like when you're watching your porn. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's a 2006 factoid. Kiarakoto, welcome to the Real Pod. It is Love Island launch day today. Is it? Yeah, oh, it is. Huge. Very, very it's exciting. It's huge. And Something we, that. Oh, sorry, Jane. No, sorry, that's, Jane. no, no. No, it's fine. You sorry. go. No, no, you go. If I may. You may. <laughs> what I've realised just this morning is that. Also, this is the first time it's on TVNZ Plus, which means it's free for everybody. This could be a massive Love Island moment for New Zealand. Fact check. It's not the first time it's been on TVNZ+. Plus. <gasps> TVNZ actually, had, as I, I've spoken to them about this, I'm very, very interested in it. Um, it. They actually had it for a few years, but it was in the sort of early days of the phenomenon. Mm. And then it went to three, and then it went to neon, and now it's returning home, um, but with a massively elevated audience. So this, I, I think your thesis is exactly right, even if your facts are facts. A bit wrong. The facts have changed. <laughs> so we really um, spin off it. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, the facts have changed. <laughs> hey, uh, my name's Janie. I'm joined by Duncan Grieve and Alex Casey, who you've heard uh, nattering away. They're also Samuels in the producer's chair. Hey, what's up? Samuel's got a moustache. He does, yeah. Yeah, oh, I, I decided to to cull the beard. I don't think any of it's particularly working, I'm not going to lie, no. but we're growing it out to see how far we can go before someone tells me you need to get rid of it. Can, can I disagree? Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think the moustache is... Outstanding. I, th- wow. I think so too. You know who else has a good moustache? Ti hair. So you guys could oh, have like yeah, a mow off. Ti hair or Ti hair does a good everything. Ti like. wear. He's not even here, is he? Mm. So that he doesn't count. That's true. But like, let's go back to Samuel. I think can you give this thing like two, three weeks, and it let it fill out. I reckon that's going to look incredible because with, I, the, with the, the the sort of jerry curls kind of thing. Like I also must say, I do dye my moustache <laughs> and eyebrows because I have very fair hair. And I stained my flatmate's sink with Just For Men. Just For Men? Over the weekend. <laughs> I haven't heard that for years. Um, you ladies stay away. That's <laughs> yeah. Just For oh, Men. Oh, man, oh. I want that. Yeah, get out. Get out. <laughs> Not allowed. Oh, I mean, damn. the reason why I brought up Tiahi's moustache is because I thought if if Samuel has one and Tiahi has one, then I'm the only person in the pod team who doesn't have one. Well. But I can get there. Oh. <laughs> I don't have one by design. (laughs) Well, not by design, but by choice. (laughs) I think I do have one by design. Anyway, uh, if you'd like to join the Real Pod Corner, go to... What is the Real Pod Corner? The show notes. Um, It's a little corner of the room (laughs) where we keep our Real Pods. It's it's where the Cornies hang out, and the Cornies are fans of the podcast. It's a Facebook group that is very active. It's it's an amazing group, and don't let the podcast put you off. (laughs) Go along to, uh, to to the Real Pod Corner or to our Discord to chat uh, tally, which are both the links to both of which are in the show notes. It's real news time. When we spoke of Love Island, I forgot to mention we've got a very special snippet later on in the show um, from a big Love Island star, huge Love Island star. What the what? That Alex Casey spoke to recently. Recently? Like I had the pleasure, the honour, the privilege of interviewing Ian Sterling himself last no. week. No. Narrator of Love Island. Wow. It was the incredible. Only original cast member left, you could say. <laughs> true, Jane. <laughs> That's dark. This is true. Oh. 
rough. Okay, yeah, and no, I realise what I just said. Sort of like then, sorry. That's fine. Next, yeah, look, it's it's true. It's still a fact. It's still a fact. Um, so, um, yeah, it was so great. We. Uh, it was early for me, late for him, and he was just zooming in from his like spare room in North London, where he records the voiceover. He just does it at home with like a freaking yeti. It was just so amazing to me how, I guess, low lo-fi it is, and how just he's just a guy. You know, he was just a casual kind of comedian who just happens to have probably like one of the most famous voices on television. Yeah, easy. It's a great way of putting it. You know it. Michelle Ang, who um, worked here at the spin-off for a wee while and is a great actress and director and so on, uh, She and she does the voice for something Star Wars, something Star Wars cartoon or something like that. Really? She goes, she goes to conferences and people mob her. But anyway, she does the same thing, just records it in a, just like in her bedroom. It's, it's, it's a whole thing. Like- it's like the real pot. Well, you know, like well, it's literally it's like not. what like, we do. Maybe we've over-engineered it. Like, where well, this studio is flash. Yeah, remember when we were in lockdown and recording from wardrobes? That was a good time. Yeah, I recorded oh. that episode of The Fold under a towel. <laughs> <laughs> I recorded from I recorded from Stephen Tyndall's walk-in wardrobe at his batch for a while. Oh, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those were days. Been. Man, we had really good listenership back then too. Hey, um, Alex, you had a bungled experience uh, at Pole. Oh, yeah. I thought you guys would have more real news to contribute. Now I just look like I'm... No, no, it's leading the news. uh, This is leading the bulletin. Well, just I had had yet another faux pas in my life. So I do this. I go to pole fitness twice a week. and I love it. And there's a part of the the classes which I have not partaken in, which is you have this sheet. It's like a a checklist of moves. And once you check off all the moves, you get to graduate to level two and you get a little rosette. But pole... I think so, yeah. <laughs> but you get a little rosette and you get your photo taken. And at first I was like, I'm trying to work on um, not being motivated by external um, <laughs> praise and <laughs> that sort of thing. So I was like, no, I don't need this. I'm doing this just for me. And as the weeks have crawled on, I've become more and more obsessed with the sheet. <laughs> 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 and everyone else taking their sheets up at the start of class and getting it ticked off. So I was like, okay, this week I'm going to take in my sheet. It's going to be so good. It's got my name on it. I'll put it at the class. I'll tell the instructor I want to start being like, you know, ticked off like this. Finally got to pole, took the sheet up, was so excited. was like, I'm ready to start my journey. And she looked at me and I had given her my shopping list. (laughs) (laughs) And then I went, oh, no, don't worry about that. Sorry. And And put it in my bag. And I have not tried since. Oh, no, Alex, you got to do it. Uh, but I, I, I embarrassed myself now. I put myself out there. Yeah, but I think and she saw everything. How did you go with the shaved hand move? What was it? How did you go with the shaved hand move? That was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't compute. <laughs> Vegetarian, Jane. <laughs> Not good then. I, uh, I think you should re, re find the list. Bring back the list. The real list. Not um, another thing. The real list. And get in, get in, get in there. What, what are the names of the things Sounds on the list? It's very satisfying. I do want a rosette. It's very important to me that I get certificates and rosettes. <laughs> what do you often. have to do? Can you do all the things? I'm, uh, that's the other thing. Is like I've basically aced all of them already. I just haven't been ticking it off. So oh. now I'm in this. I have to kind of go back through the motions. Oh, anyway. But that was my fumble of the week. <laughs> It's pretty good. That's a great one. I have only one thing to contribute. Well, I've got two things, but one I don't really know much about. I don't know much about this either. But here's uh, my contribution to the real news. Pete Evans, ex-MKR judge, current wellness guru, self-claimed. He's grown himself a mohawk mullet. Oh, yeah. So this is what it looks like, and it's really something. What do you think, Duncan? I don't know if I agree with that description. Okay, that's maybe not the best. You can see, look, look down there. Yeah, yeah, I can see that there's a mullet at the back, but I think it's too broad at the front to qualify. The one that I'm showing you, he's got his hair wet. I don't think it it is an accurate, the best picture. Um, You've really taken the wind out of my sails here. (laughs) Well, look, (laughs) people come to Real because they want... Pretty hardcore reporting. Okay, what about that? I feel like that is very much a mohawk mullet. Yeah. Is it just a mohawk? But, it's, but it's, it might just be... Uh, no, because it grows longer. It sort of grows then, down then, the nape of the When you think neck. about a mohawk, when it's not being spiked up, it's going to naturally... He looks like a Shetland pony. And also, it's pretty broad. I think it just... Uh, I don't know what that is. Well, okay. look, you can agree with the headline. 
That it's a bold new haircut. It's a bold new haircut. Okay, it's a bold I'm sorry. new haircut. I just want to say, I was just going to cite uh, The Herald, which is, what is no, it? But, but where is it? Is it, is it news.com.au? Like, where's, where's the original source? It has, appears to be a cross between a mullet and a mohawk. Okay? <laughs> no, it's a New Zealand Herald original wow. story. Okay? So that's facts. All right. That's great. I love the photo. It's like it's really blurry photo. and far away. It looks like Bigfoot. Like <laughs> it does. His, his posture and also there's uh, some sort of very fancy pizza oven uh, behind it's, him. If, but just that some punter was just so freaked out by this bold new haircut they had to snap some pics from very far away. Oh, as if you wouldn't. You oh, know? I'll be up there. I'll be getting a selfie though. I'll be getting a belfie. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what else is happening? Uh JJ's on Dom's podcast. I haven't listened to it. Sam, you've listened to a little bit of it. Nope. I just sent you the TikTok just me, reel. Just sent me the reel. Just sent me the reel. <laughs> we should get on TikTok. Um, I think that could be an interesting listen if I w- w- wanted to give Dom's podcast a listen, but I don't. It kind of shocks me that Dom's podcast is as well – like, like he, get, he gets guests you've heard of. Like, is I mean, JJ's like, not hard for him to get. No, but he had, like, Guy on Espina not that long ago. Hey, to be honest, I feel like Guy on Espina has been on quite a few podcasts. Yeah, I know. Including like, the Fold. Including the Fold. But but still, like, people you'd think would, uh, would not No better? Wa- yeah, would not want to go anywhere near <laughs> Tom Harvey for reasons we can't get into. Uh, it's just, he, he he's, get, he's getting, like, a... There's just like a quasi legitimacy about him. I believe JJ is still is still sort of um he she's bankrolling Dom. Wow, yeah. what? Yeah, that is Whoa. Stockholm syndrome. They've they've uh, she's talked about it about the fact that they um they're not officially divorced or anything, and I don't I think they share bank accounts and all. Um, this is that, wild. Is a, that is a yarn. It is a yarn. Yeah, I feel like someone should to just inquire. Do a brief inquiry into the nature of of that relationship. I just want to do um, another plug for JJ's fantastic book, Life on the Edge, because it's, I never it did is, read that. It is oh, so good. I got, I got two, Can two attest. Chaps. It's riveting. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what else is riveting. A fantastic piece from Tara Ward, close dear friend of the pod, writer for the spin-off. She's done a great piece called uh, No Tina from Tuna's Didn't Die. Do you want to tell us more, Alex? <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't realise this, that... Um, when Tina Turner tragically passed away a few weeks ago, a lot of New Zealand thought that Tina from Turner's had died. <laughs> Particularly <laughs> under a certain age, I guess. Yeah, but, but when we when we said it, Vivian was mortified. Um, maybe literally mortified? She, she was afraid of Tina from Turner's being dead. Um, wow. Yeah. So there was an increase in searches by 250%. Tina from Turner's died. Did Tina from Turner's die? 160% up. And then who is Tina Turner? 110% up on Google searches. So Tara Ward has just set the record straight, said she's very much alive. She's also not a real person, <laughs> um, <laughs> so which might be news. <laughs> which, exactly. Which might be news to some people. But it, it, it did quite, it did make me sort of think. I had never really considered that we actually have this huge new entry into like the advertising canon in New Zealand. Tina from Turner's has carved out in a very short space of time quite an amazing space in the sort of Suzanne Paul Briscoe's Mount Rushmore. Yeah, it's, she's definitely, I was about to say, she'd be on the Mount Rushmore. What would the, would Adrian and John from Magnus, Magnus Benro? Oh, Adrian be, and John. That's a voice. A sort of you know, it's a voice. <laughs> what about like spray and walk away? I mean, that's, it's troublesome. It's it is troublesome. It's problematic. <laughs> but it is troublesome. He's there. Or Vince Martin. Vince from Martin, yeah. My dad used to get pissed off that he wasn't, uh, he didn't get the call up. I think he might have. He didn't get the part for Spray and Walk Away. Did he go for it? Yeah, I think he's. Um, it's Man, terrible. Your dad's I know. Yeah. He's in a Beds R Us campaign at the moment. Wow. <laughs> Nearing 90, I might add. It's actually a story. Um, it is actually a story. We, we should. We should do the um, New Zealand like spokesmodel Hall of Fame. That, that's a yeah. That's a, a whole copyright podcast copyright the spinoff. And we'll actually chisel it somewhere. Is that what you mean? Like. Yeah, no, just just the chiselling. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we won't make any content out of it. Can I suggest no. we use Pete Evans here? Because I feel like he's already he's done the groundwork. It's too controversial. Okay, it's, <laughs> tear us apart. Uh, any other news, guys? Any other last minute breaking news? No, uh, no. Right. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. Reality check. I have four ways to decide. 
I am disgusted at how much you have copied my husband. <laughs> Did you just buy? Reality check. Why are you go, Alex? Because I got nothing here. Ah, oh, well, I've just put in a lot of plugs for my own work. <laughs> if you'll allow me. I thought you were working on not getting your um Yeah <laughs> your sense of self worth from other people's praise. This is me standing in front of you with my shopping list crying. <laughs> saying, please acknowledge me. Um no, I interviewed the the people who made tracked. Uh, three's big adventure kind of chase show. Good old uh, John Wilde, who made The Apprentice. You might remember him from when he walked up to the office and gave us some popcorn that time. Um, lovely man. Also, here's a here's an interesting tidbit. His nanny, not for him, but for his children, Katie from Treasure Island. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is he the one that I had on the fold? Yes. Oh, lovely chat. <laughs> I can't remember you may remember all. him from <laughs> your all, own podcast. We've all had... We've all had uh, well, mine's a bit, bit two degrees, but, you know, we're all connected. You know, carry oh. on, Alex, sorry. And um, Anne Cass Donaldson from Great Southern, famously line producer for the spin-off TV, beloved, beloved nice program. Face. People yeah, still talk sure. about it to this day. <laughs> and um, I just talked to them about how they made the show, and they just had some really good stories about, because each team and the trackers each have a camera op assigned to them who are with them the whole time, like they're doing the game, which means that they have to be as stealthy and as kind of fit and everything as the contestants. And the camera op who was attached to the trackers <laughs> in episode one, if you watched it, which I'm sure you both did and loved it and can't wait to talk about it, um, they the trackers came within 50 metres of another one of the teams, but then they called off the hunt for the night. So the hunt ends at 5 p.m. every night. So the trackers were like, oh, we're so close. <clears throat> but we can't pitch a tent for the night because they'll hear us or they'll see us and we can't risk it. So the trackers just zipped up their jackets and lay down in the long grass and the cameraman had to do that too. (laughs) Isn't this in, like, the cold island? It is in the cold island. It It is in the cold island. warm months? But I don't think it was, I I don't imagine it was the depths of winter. Yeah, but Um, it still gets cold all night, doesn't it? Yeah, and it pissed with rain all night, and this this cameraman just like stuck it out with the rest of them. So I just thought, you know, spare a thought for the crew. <laughs> Did you catch the camera op's name? I'm just wondering uh, if it might have been someone from Treasure Island as all. Well. One of my good friends. No, I don't know. Malcolm. Malcolm. <laughs> you just made Send that up. Story. <laughs> no, no, it's Malcolm. It's Malcolm. I don't know Malcolm. Malcolm somebody. Oh, maybe I do know Malcolm. Malcolm Brave Man. <laughs> <laughs> There was a Malcolm who shot the promo for uh, for Treasure Island. Malcolm. There can only be one, surely. Uh, yeah, well, Malcolm is quite a common name, but Malcolm I've never even heard of, so surely only one. Surely. Um, that's that's real full on. Where's the blue book is what I want to know. For those who don't know, the blue book is like the industry guideline book of what you can and can't do, how you can and can't torture cast and crew on. Where, where, whether you can or can't use sort of minds. Yes, <laughs> mines yeah, to, to blow up um, <laughs> contestants, whether or not you can make Ops. camera ops. Who are, who are carrying cameras around? Yeah, they're op- is there a sounding? Yeah. Well, this is the other thing is that, no, this is just a camera person, but I think because they were worried the camera ops would be less fit than the contestants, they actually gave the contestants a lot of gear to carry. <laughs> like they had to carry a lot of the camera gear. Um, the contestants? Yeah. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> they've each got 20 kg packs, and that's just, like, part of the thing. So it doesn't really matter what that 20 kg is, as long as they've got supplies to survive, of course. <laughs> but, yeah, I believe it was all above the board. I mean, they were very clear about all the safety protocols. They had safety stations at various points. And the camera op did have the option to pitch a tent, but it sort of reading between the lines, he felt kind of embarrassed. The social pressure to not pitch a tent <laughs> yeah. and just lie on the ground. And just, you know, Malcolm in the middle of the trackers. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, Malcolm Clement, by the way, it's not my, it was not my Malcolm. Didn't think so. Oh, okay. My Malcolm was kind of older, so I thought, well, that's a bit, that's a bit rough. Uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Clement, I've just looked him up and I reckon he can handle. Just going f- purely from visuals, he looks, he looks like a hardy man. Shane's <laughs> <laughs> really enjoying this little search. Oh God, I'm tracking <laughs> the tracking Yeah, you're the real off. tracker. You're really falling apart as a host right now. I am. I've got so many tabs open and now I've lost my notes. But I-, <laughs> I reached, um, I've reached, lately I've been really getting beyond my normal and I've got to that point where you, a new tab, you can't, it's not part of your tab array on Chrome and you just get the smiley face on, on oh, no. phone Chrome 
and I, you know, it's. What it's, are you talking about? Well, you know, On your well, phone, you've got that many tabs open. Yeah, that's you, you oh, get that over a hundred. That'll which, be killing your battery, won't it? No, I don't think so. I think that's how tabs work. My worst thing. I don't thing, know about that. <laughs> my worst thing is with, with tabs is I can have one. I can have like seven or eight different windows going all oh, with no, many, don't many tabs. Do that. I know. I don't know how it just does it. I don't know. Oh, man. I don't that's, know computers. That made me feel better. But. I did spend uh, two hours on the weekend um, sorting out the connection between my mum's new laptop and her printer. So well done me. I got that, called, called in IT department. Absolutely not. <laughs> Kia ora, I'm Alex Casey, senior writer at The Spin-Off. We wouldn't exist without the ongoing support of our generous members. If you're able to, you can make a donation at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. Are you curious about how business can be better? I'm Simon Pound, and I host Business is Boring, a podcast where I caught it all with some of the most interesting people in entrepreneurship, commerce, and making things happen. Tune in to Business is Boring every Tuesday, brought to you by the Spinoff Podcast Network in partnership with Spark Business Lab. Should we, should we do the Ian Sterling bit now? Let's do it. Yeah. We've got a clip. What are we about to, roll the, what are we about to hear? Roll the clip. <laughs> no need. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what we're about to hear. Um, so this is from my conversation with Ian Sterling. I thought I need to get an exclusive for the real pod and something that I think I wrote about last year during the season of Love Island UK was trying to figure out what the villa exactly smells like because there's been a lot of mixed reports. Some people say it smells like fake tan. Some people say it smells like sweat. Some people say it doesn't smell at all. So I thought, although Ian Sterling now mostly works from the UK, was there was say, a time where he, he there was a time where he would visit the villa frequently. He used to do it from Spain um, nearby. Uh, so I decided to ask him the question. Um, you've been to the villa before, I assume. You've walked in those Lots doors. Lots of times. Can you tell me what it smells like? Uh, at the start, it smells like a multi-million pound villa. And at the end, it smells like stinky teenagers. <laughs> Actually, that's not most of them smell all right. Do you know what one was a, actually did stink? Was it was the first, and it's not their fault. It was the first South African one, so I can't remember what year that was. But the dressing rooms were on the ground floor, unventilated ground floor, and I went in there on the final, and my god, it smelled like a like a, an all boys school common room. <laughs> like it was disgusting. <laughs> it was it was honestly vile. This is um, great. But it just smells like they smell like normal people. They don't look like in real life. They don't look like normal people. It's like it's mad. They're all so attractive. Like it's ridiculous. Even the ones that you because they all look they're all stood together. So when you see them in the wild in isolation, they look mad, good, and lovely. All of them. But yeah, they sort of smell like regular people, which is quite funny. Especially because it's sunny. It's hot. They are sweating. It's just wild to hear his voice. And, and, and responding to a question posed by one third of the real pod. That's just amazing. Well done, Alex. Just incredible. That's what wants to get. How? Well, thank you, TVNZ. You know, I think we're, we were one of two and I, I feel very lucky. And he, yeah, he was great. I mean, he, he's he been a part of the show since the very start. And I think people kind of forget that, that... um. He's sort of seen it all evolve. But also what I liked is like he's kind of growing up. Like he was he was like, yeah, I was crawling into work smoking in the mornings, like, you know, next to the villa <laughs> to record my VO. And now I do it from London and I've got like a toddler <laughs> and like <laughs> I just try and put my put my clothes on and do my little work every day. And what's amazing is that he only works with one other guy. Um, and they write the entire thing. They write. I, I imagine there was like a writer's room. Yeah, um, because the jokes are really good, and they're incredibly good. They're, and they're having to produce them at such volume, and and they're they're also like weird and a they're, they're consistent. Like it's a it's a it it almost defies belief that you can do that with a two person team. In yeah, and the guy who he works with, who like, oh no, I was like, I want to say it's called Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it's that called, too. It's called Mark, Mark, I think, who actually was the creator of the format. Um, and they almost have like what sounds like sort of a, a Bible, like a few things they turn to in terms of joke structures and things like that. And they actually get basically the edit of the show. So they're, 
they've only they can only work with what they've got. They get a rough cut at around two p.m. and they're finished by six. Like that's kind of how quickly it, they work. That's the it's thing. Like the turnaround is is wild. Like it's it's like a sort of a short and straight type. They will just smash it out machine. It's very strange. Do you remember? I can't remember her name, but we had. Um no, we didn't have her on. <laughs> you should care about had her on their podcast. I recorded it. I can't remember her name, but one of the contestants um, who was great, can't remember her name. That's very helpful. But she she was talking about how the producers, you know, like they they do come in to the villa each day, and they've got like stylists who give them clothes and things. And it just really it really messes with my head the idea that. There are other people other than the contestants who are present in their villa sometimes. Obviously, they don't make it on camera. But doesn't mm. doesn't that mess you up? It messes me up real bad. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Like, they can't all just be wandering. Like, it's like, girls to the fire pit over there, <laughs> boys to the fire pit over there. Like, <clears throat> surely they're not naturally doing all of that every day. Maybe they are. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you, they sort of need a bit of, and I, I, yeah, I, I can't really see how they would create television without some outside instruction and, you know, like some goading and some pairing off and, you know, like like it. I don't mind it, I guess is what I'm saying. <gasps> I mind it. <laughs> I mind it. Just to, You want just untampered I want, observational yeah. documentary. Well, I mean, you know, sure, come over like a loudspeaker or something. Oh, yeah. You know, but don't walk in. Don't mess with the aroma, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Why did it stink? It might have been the producers. It might have been the producers. Anyway. Stinky. Um, he also revealed his favourite joke that he's ever written Ooh. Ooh. on the series. Maybe we could roll a clip. Should we roll a clip? Let's roll a clip. Let's roll a clip. <laughs> I don't have a clip. I haven't told you where it is. <laughs> I've definitely got, like, favourite jokes. My favourite jokes are when we use what they say to, like, do the punchline, if you know what I mean. So, like, mm -hmm. I remember the... One of the most famous coupling ups when like Tommy Fury was deciding whether to couple with um, Maura Higgins or Molly May. And I'd say Tommy and Molly, if you've if, if the people haven't seen it, they're probably the most famous couples that come out of the show ever. And then um, before he went, he went, he does I, I said, he doesn't know if he's picking Maura or Molly, but he has decided what he's doing with his driveway. And it just cuts to him going, I'm bricking it, which <laughs> I thought was really funny. That's a real, that's a real um, motif of his. Yeah. Like, uh, mm. and, and it just works every time. Like, it's so good. Friend of the pod. Yeah. I mean, he could come here and do it from here. We've Maybe got I'll, microphones. He could be the new NASA. <laughs> well, the old, the old NASA will not have that. Well, what's the most recent communicate, Alex? Let me just check. <laughs> And, and, can, can, new one. And, and can we <clears throat> have a, a sort of a date stamp? It was recent. Okay, oh, no. hold on a second. <laughs> NASA Maths Friday. <laughs> 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 it is it's currently Tuesday. Friday, 11 a.m. Hello, guys. Hope you are all well. Miss our chats. Kiss NASA, your fave celeb. <laughs> Oh, I like that he thinks he's texting like a communal phone. There's so many really <laughs> cool things about that one relatively <laughs> short message, right? There's the communal phone for sure. The kiss is nice. Like there's an intim easy intimacy there. <laughs> but I think that the last part, the, the, the your fave celeb feels quite like it's almost stern. <clears throat> it's like your fave celeb. Yeah, don't forget. Don't forget. About me. I also actually really Don't like stray. the I Miss Our Chats, considering we've had maybe two. Two. I mean, you've had more. Yeah. Personally, you've had more. I've had more. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just the way he spun out that award, which was gifted to him as like one of the top 20, and he immediately went, thank you for <laughs> saying I am the best math star of all time. But, but it was and also now it's become favourite celebrity ever. <laughs> but it also, wa it also wasn't best maths characters. It was most memorable, and he was memorable for arguably not the best reasons, you know? Well, who, who, who was memorable for a good reason with that show? Troy. That's Past true. Alan, Troy. That's true. <laughs> that guy knows how to use camera for sure. Uh, Alex... Mermaids, tell us about oh, it. I mean, not the God. strip club, unless you want to. Not a lot to say about Mermaids the Club. A lot to say about the Mermaids show on Netflix. Just a, It's a great new documentary series following all these wannabe mermaids. I didn't realise there's such a big mermaid community out there. These are people who want to 
not live as mermaids, but especially work as mermaids. And it's a very competitive industry. There's not a lot of places to go. Competitive this industry. Is America. Hang on. How do you make money out of this? Um, children's parties. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> There's there's one man who's building like a tank, like an arena with a tank in it for full mermaid shows all the time, and he's doing tryouts. So it's sort of like cheer, but for mermaids. <laughs> um, they, they, they surely will see a bump in demand with the release of the live action Little Mermaid from Disney. Mm, that's a really good point. I think that's the whole reason the series is coming out right now. <gasps> oh, oh, that's, my that's gosh. clever media analysis that's from good. Sam there. That's really good from Samuel. Um, no, it's just fascinating. It's just a. I recommend it as a as an interesting watch. A few years ago, <laughs> it was a bit of a trend for 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 young kids, particularly young girls, to um, get want to have these little mermaid tail things that you could. You, they were like basically like a mermaid shaped sleeping bag that just went up to your waist, right? So you had your little fins and you stuck both your legs in. But then they started jumping in the pools with them, and it became mm. a bit dangerous. It seems like a bit of a drowner. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it was good. Like we did there. That's good. Um, oh, my God. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's all I've got to contribute because I haven't seen it. What's, what's Barmarash? Oh, just another. So I'm just I'm just recommending things. It's been a long weekend. I've been watching a lot of TV. Barmarash is on Neon. It's an HBO documentary about the Alabama sorority rushes each year. It's crazy. Have you seen it, Doug? No, You're no I've, I'm aware of the phenomenon. I think it might be Bama Rush just because it's Alabama, not Alabama. Bama. But um, but carry on. I'm very curious. Sorry. Yeah, so I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know that it was this thing that blew up on TikTok in 2021. It kind of became um, this viral sensation where people who were trying to get into different sororities were kind of making TikToks about their experience and then – just millions of people were watching and started choosing their favorite kind of pledges and who they wanted to go where. And it became this reality show in itself. And so this documentary maker um, followed a couple of people trying to get into different sororities the next year. And yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but it gets pretty crazy. And there's a bit of conspiracy stuff. And there's some wig stuff. Wow. Oh, you know? okay. There's some wig stuff. You know I love wig stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Putting that on the watch list. Um, over the weekend, I watched The Unbearable Way of Massive Talent, which is a movie from last year. <laughs> it's quite old. That is good. Uh, oh, is that the Nicholas Cage It's so good. I really it's enjoyed good, it. Yeah. It's so weird and funny and good. Just thought I'd throw that out as a wreck for my, for, 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 for my own self. Um, something I don't recommend is the new, it's terrible, terrible promo. Sorry, um, who's it going, what's it going to be on? Bravo. Sorry, Bravo. Bravo. Uh, but there's a new show following Snow Workers, a new reality show in The Remarkables and Coronet Peak. Oh, yeah. And I was interested until it said, but don't expect it to be the below deck of Queenstown. It's more a documentary style series like Bondi Rescue with all the action that goes on behind the scenes. Ski fields. Boring. Make it like below deck. That would be great. My sister actually used to be mountain rescue person at Ruapehu. So um, it was pretty dramatic shit, man. Like, I, I can imagine it being... But that's just not really our genre, is it? I don't think this is rescue, though. I think it's, um, I think it's well, just... What is it, then? Well, it sh- what it should be is the below deck of the ski fields. Yeah. But I just don't know if there's a... Like, what, would it have to be, like, at a mountain lodge, like an exclusive yeah. lodge? Yeah, and season... But, but people coming in, seasonal yeah. workers, you know? They're always drunk at night, hungover during the day, I think one of the teaching things, kids to ski. Yeah, but isn't part of the appeal of Below Deck that it's at sea and it's in this kind of, it's sort of international Entained. waters-y vibe as well, you know? Like, it feels a bit lawless, mm. um, whereas I think there are some laws on land. This um, other quote, our show is much more about the team behind the scenes and what we do to make sure our mountain is ready for guests. It's not oh so God, much about the guests themselves. It's, it's just it's a terrible, terrible you've got, premise. You've like, got a good product and you want people to – no, absolutely not. Uh, my recommendations, <laughs> I watched uh, the first half of the new season of I Think that I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson. Gorgeous, glorious, no nuts. Amazing. Really just the- – do you have standout sketches that have like stuck in your head already? Um, the pro- probably, but I've not done the prep to really. I mean, I, I, I'm <laughs> now panicking. Tell, tell me yours. Well, one that I think the real pod audience would enjoy is the one that's like it's sort of a faux bachelor show, oh, so but there's a good. guy on there who's just there to write, like to do the zip line. <laughs> that is just really every day, excellent. endless zip lining <laughs> while they're trying to go on dates and stuff. It's just delightful. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of different sketch shows have tried to do kind of parodies of reality shows and the zip line one is just 
the best I've seen. It, it is, <laughs> because it's not really, like the reality show is almost like quasi-incidental. They're not trying to make fun of reality shows. They're trying to make fun of this guy. This guy. Um, <laughs> this guy. I also watched My Man's, which is like a one-episode pilot. wasn't picked up. It was a Tim Robinson sketch show from 2011. It's available on Vimeo. <laughs> wow. I'm going deep, but I, it's really, really, like you can just see that he had that thing built like 12 years mm. ago. It's the same length. It's a. It's kind of meta in that the sketch just keeps going, but it's still a sketch show somehow. It's very, very odd, but like, you know, strongly, strongly recommend that if you're a fan of Tim Robinson and his, his kind of very special, very strange world that he's built. Have you watched Detroiters? Detroiters is one of my favourite comedies that there's ever been. Right. Absolute masterpiece. Really hard to watch. I think it might be on Neon now. Really? Because because it's it's part of the Viacom disaster world of we just don't even know where our content is, which is because it's on, it was on Comedy Central, so n- that's why I th- yeah. Well, so Nathan for you is now on Neon, so it's yeah. plausibly there. Um, might be worth. Oh checking. no, I don't know. It's, but so many of those shows are like you basically they're, they're just demanding that you you illegally stream them. But yeah, Detroit is absolute masterpiece. Very very sad that it didn't get. Uh, Get up. Something I'm really keen to illegally stream is the bloody Hill Song. Yeah, I've seen Hillsong. you scrounging for a link in the Discord. No one's, Jane. No one's giving me one. <laughs> I saw that too. <laughs> I know. I want it. Bloody I want to watch it. Leads. I've just I've just watched <laughs> the trailer and that's all I can watch. I'm not good with the internet. Don't tell my well, mum. But yeah, you know, but, you know, you're Alex Casey, an absolute sleuth. A link. Tell link you who I should hit up. I'll hit up Malcolm the cameraman. Or Ollie Chick. Like, Ollie Chick's. Beast. Ollie Chick knows. Uh, Ollie Chick will have seen my message and is clearly ignoring it for some reason or other. Hey, last week, remember we told you about the big news. It's still coming. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. It's still coming. We just... Uh, we'll just do like a monster tease. You know how like Lucy and Belle are teasing something big <laughs> and they've been teasing it for like three months. This uh, is across, shit you should hear about, by the way. Across multiple formats. Maybe, yeah. maybe, well, I guess it works good for engagement. It's really good for engagement. Um, and we'll figure out what that something big is and when we do... No, it is so big. It's so big. It will rock you to your core. All right. I think that's the end of our podcast. I think the end of our podcast was about 15 minutes ago, actually, but we'll... Um, we'll, we'll do it officially now. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you, Samuel. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Duncan. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. We'll be back next week with more of this very important investigative stuff. It also be my last podcast for um, until August. That's the big news. It's not the That's big news. That's not the big news. It's not the big news. <laughs> but big for me. It is big. It is big. All right. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Kia ora, this is Toby Manhire, here to urge you to tune in to Gone by Lunchtime, a podcast with me, Annabelle Lee Mather and Ben Thomas, tackling the world of New Zealand politics, from policy to polling, from scandal to psychodrama. Listen to Gone by Lunchtime, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network, wherever good pods are sold. Kia ora, I'm Duncan Grieve, founder of The Spin-Off. You can help us keep all of The Spin-Off's award-winning journalism free for everybody by becoming a member today at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. The Spin-Off Podcast Network.